cool stories. As I'm sure you can easily tell, we have left the studio this morning. In fact, we are on location on beautiful Lookout Mountain, Camp Woodmont to be exact, because over the years, Emily McKay, Kim Teams Fox from Faces have come our way on the show, and this time they've invited us up to be a part of their one week a year Faces Camp. And we're very happy this morning to be talking with Ashley Rhodes, Ryan Vargas, who are here, very special people, tapped to talk to us this morning. So thanks to the two of you. Oh, thank you. Uh, Ryan, I'm gonna begin with you um, right. because as our conversation will kind of go, both you and Ashley have your own unique story uh, in our conversation this morning, but both of you born with a craniofacial difference. Yep. And that's what the Faces Camp embraces. Kids from all over the country come here for one week a year, uh, all of them having a craniofacial difference and that's cast aside and they bond in childhood fun for a week. Absolutely. No, it's great to be here. Um, I mean, you know, as for myself, I was born with craniosynostosis, uh, coronal synostosis, and, uh, you know, after meeting Kim and the team here at Faces uh, a few years ago, um, it's great to finally, you know, see all of them in person finally yeah. and uh, be a part of this incredible camp. It's hard for me to imagine that you're only 22 years old. Uh, you've packed a lot into 22 years, yes. and you're still packing, but you have been on the NASCAR circuit for five years now. Yep. Did you ever have a time in your life where someone said, oh no, you can't possibly do that, you have a craniofacial difference? Uh, fortunately, no. Fortunately, that was never something that was like a, um, something to hold me back. Um, and that's one, one reason why, you know, I joined Faces and, you know, became a part of this is because I wanted to kind of at least lend a voice uh, to a lot of these kids who do have craniofacial differences. And like Ashley, you know, people who are able to overcome that and continue, you know, living their life. So as we talk to Ashley, I want to stress again the, the fact here, which is that we happen to be in our own backyard, but the people who are here this week are not from our own backyard. We are very, very unique in the country and having an overnight camp experience here at the Faces Camp. And I did not know until I got up here this morning, Ashley, that you're the woman to thank for that. This was all your idea several yes, years ago. Yes. Born yes. out of love for your son, Jack. Absolutely, absolutely. I, um, I, I, I worked for Faces in, um, right out of college in the late 90s. And, um, and then I got married and moved away and, you know, did all the things. And I had a, and I had a son who has um, a craniofacial syndrome as well. He has Cruzan syndrome. And when he was about five, um, I started looking for camp opportunities for him, and I quickly realized that it was it was not that easy to find one. Um, for the first eight years of his life, he had a trach, um, in addition to the craniofacial anomalies, um, and so cognitively, he's you know fine, just like everyone else, and. Um, is in all regular classes at school and does all the normal things and plays all the sports and does the things. Um, but people were apprehensive to accept a child with a trach, you know, for a camp opportunities, yeah. And so I went back to the ladies at Faces and, and I said, you know, help me with this. And um, they said, let's do some research. Let's see what's out there, what's out there for craniofacial kids. Obviously, if we're gonna try and do a camp, sure. we need a nurse. Right. Okay. And so um, that was number one thing. And so let's let's create an opportunity that even though they might have some medical needs, let's see if we can remedy that and care for that right. so that they can have a normal experience. And flash forward, I mean, the idea was such a good one that back to the point I'm making, the word got out uh, and kids from all over the country were lining up to do this. One thing that y'all strive to do though at the Faces Camp is to make it as quote normal Absolutely. of an experience as possible. So all the kids coming here have a craniofacial difference uh, but the independence is there. Oh yeah. They're, they're not having to come with their parents. They can take care of themselves while they're here for the week and they can have fun doing all the camp things from zip lining to hanging out on the water to I'm sure making s'mores over a campfire, right? Absolutely. Did you ever in your wildest dreams think it would grow to this? Uh, I hoped it would. I hoped it would. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't, when we 
when we had our inaugural year, just getting it off up off the ground was just so amazing and so wonderful to, to see it come to fruition because we worked on it for probably a year and a half um, before, before it came to light. I could be wrong, but it seems like when you kind of go back to your memory of it all and what got you started with it, it seems like there's still emotion that kind of tugs at you. Is it an emotional story to talk about for you? A little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah, just, 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 yeah, obviously because it's so, it's so personal to me. Um, you know, when I, when I first started working at Faces in the late nineties, we, we kind of had talked about a camp and nothing really ever came of it. I want to ask you, Ryan, something that you had shared with me yeah. uh, before we begin the cameras rolling, and that is the the commonality, if that's the right word, yeah. um, of your particular difference, which is called again what? Craniosynostosis. Craniosynostosis. So you were telling me that one in two to three thousand children born has it. If you've ever seen a baby with a little helmet yep. on their head, my best friend's son had that. <laughs> uh, that's what it is. So yeah. it's very common, but it can look different ways for different people. Yeah, I mean, you know, it ranges from all over, right? I mean, you see, like you mentioned, you see the young kids with the helmet all the way to having, you know, a surgery like myself, all the way to having, you know, multiple surgeries, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, I kind of fit right in the middle there. Yeah. Um, and I'm very fortunate to be, you know, in that spot where I only needed one surgery. But, you know, to me, lending a voice to those who, you know, have been through either throughout that whole, you know, uh, spectrum of, right. uh, you know, severity is very important. You do have a following uh, yeah. with your NASCAR driving. So you're very out in the open about this. And I think you're hoping for more and more people as they become fans of yours to also become fans of faces. Of faces. Um, do you see this growing? Because we do live at a time now where inclusion is everything. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, I want it to be. You know, I want it to be less, you know, I want people to come up to me at the race and not say, what's that haircut you have? I want people to come up to me and say, wow, that's really cool that you support this cause. Yeah. You know, I know somebody that has this. Because more, more than likely you do. More than likely, you know, people know somebody who has gone through some sort of, you know, craniofacial or craniosynostosis, you know, uh, situation. And it's, it's so important just to show to people that, you know, all these, all these incredible kids who are, you know, doing everything and sh becoming very independent and growing day by day. And mom to mom, Ashley, uh, when you, I know you love watching the kids but do you also love watching the parents' faces when they come to pick up their kids? Oh, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely, that's amazing. Because, you know, I've dealt with parents who, you know, I'm on the phone with them before camp, they're, they're scared, they're nervous, they're worried, it's, it's their baby, it's their baby. And um, they drop them off, and then at the end of the week, they pick them up and they, they're just like, thank you. This has been amazing. This has been a wonderful experience. And they come and their child is just so different because they've learned more independence. They've learned to do for themselves. They've learned all the things that you're supposed to learn when you come to camp. And it just, the parents, you know, this one mom that came and picked up her kid last year, she was crying when she picked her up um, because it was just so emotional and amazing for her to watch, to see, see it through the lens of her child. So you can be a part of the miracle uh, if you want to. The camp is over now for this year, but they are always looking for ways to make this affordable and possible for kids all across the country to come to our own backyard in Chattanooga. So if you're touched by this as we are, you can learn more at their website, which you see there on your screen. Uh, and I'll let the kids get back to playing and laughing now. Thank oh, yeah. you both so much. Thank you. Look no further than Mercantile at the Ridge for that unique home furnishing or collectible. The same